to start with, Michael, is it Paletta? Michael Paletta, is he here? Is that? Can I just talk to you after class real fast? Everything's fine. I just want uh, John, Gib, where are you at? There you are. Gib, can I talk to you too? Do you have Do you have a class after this one? Would you mind if I uh, talk to the after class? Try to work that thing out. It shouldn't take long once I get all this stuff out of the way. That'd be helpful. Thank you. And Adora. Anna? Okay, I'll repeat that one when she gets here. Um, well, it's on the same page. Uh, if I read one of your last names, then there's still an issue with your clicker that you haven't finished the registration process. So uh, the following, Ding, Hodson, Jin, J-I-N, uh, forgive me, Ruiz, Ruiz, oh, we got 50% of those. Most likely, my guess from what I see is those, you just haven't redeemed a, a license code. D uh, Hudson and Ding, did you buy a, an actual clicker? Hudson? I'm sorry, Ding, did you actually buy a clicker? So probably it should have come with a code that you can enter into your turning account online under license from your dashboard. If you go there, then it'll, it'll activate it, and we'll be able to integrate between Canvas uh, and uh, Turning Point. Does that make sense? If you log into your turning, turning account online, you create an account. Uh, just check somewhere in there. It says license. You, probably, you start on your dashboard, and there should be a big thing, you know, license. Click on it. And that's where you can redeem the code that came with your clicker. That, that looks like it hasn't been done yet. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, now, similar issue. There's still an issue, but probably a different pro reason. The following people have uh, still have an issue. Atwood and Barbary, uh, Chavez, Crosby, forgive me, Viardo, Gib, uh, Ma, Reed, Riri, or Riri. Those, those people, it could be many issues. There's nothing noted that you've, I, I see that you've done nothing. So it could be one of several things. You either haven't created your attorney account yet, you haven't redeemed your license code, or you haven't registered your ID, or all of the above, or you haven't gone through the modules on Canvas to link. So I can't see any of your, your data. So if I just read your name, you're not getting any credit for clickers yet. The registration process, I, I encourage you to reread the uh, syllabus where all the instructions are. There's a video. I sent out an email uh, reiterating it and discussed it last Friday. Uh, go check those out if I read your name. And if you still have issues, obviously, I'll help you work through it. You can contact me. But I want, again, those people aren't getting any credit for clickers. If you've been here and participating with clickers, I have your responses. So once you do this, I can give you credit. I just don't know it's you yet, so I can't give you credit. Questions about that? The, the last email I sent is probably the most useful. Basically, go into your turning account. I, I, I should pause. I sent it to the emails through uh, CIS, Campus Information System that is related to the canvas. So the email associated with you, it went to that one, unless you don't check that one often. Um, but it basically says log into your turning account and check. Do you have a nice green check mark back next to a device ID if you have a clicker? If not, enter it. 
Do you have an active license? It should say whether you do or not. If you don't, you haven't redeemed a code or bought one or something. If you have all that in place, there should be a, an LMS, a Learning Management System, integration note too that should be say it's connected to Utah. If you don't see that, that's because you didn't go through Canvas modules, as the instruction said, to link the account so I, it doesn't know it's you. So those are some things to check. And then those of you that haven't been following the calendar on WebAssign, we have an exam in a week. Woohoo! The bright side is, you know, we, we don't cover super a lot of material before we do it, so you don't have to remember hordes and hordes all at once. Yeah? Those pre lecture things, can you go back and do those? Or that's the the pre lecture is just two simple questions. The point of me doing that is to quote unquote force, <laughs> encourage you to look at the material before you ever come to class because studies and research have shown you'll get way more out of class while you're here to ask questions if this is not the very first time you've ever been exposed to it. So it's meant to be done before the class as the due dates list. I've been, an, I've announced those. I, fair enough, if you missed last Wednesday's, because that was the first one, email me. I understand the first one, even though I still gave you a week and a half of warning. But after that, no. Uh, that being said, it's, it's two points. And if you look on the syllabus and in WebAssign under announcements, the pre-lectures are going to add up to just 5% of your overall grade. So missing two probably won't be a big deal. Yes? The exam is going to be right here. Uh, and the format is just like the homework and just like the clicker questions I've been asking and the pre-lecture questions. I don't change anything. So any of you that use the excuse, oh, the exam questions are stuff, material you never covered, the format was different. I'll be blunt, that's hogwash. I pull them all from the same pool and just decide, okay, this one's going on homework, this one's going on pre-lecture, this one's going on the exam, they're from the same bank. Um, and so there'll be uh, multiple choice. Uh, there's going to be 30 questions. Uh, almost I haven't had anybody say they didn't have enough time to complete. Uh, often, the first student to finish the exams have, have been done as quick as 10 minutes. 15 or 20 is more reasonable for the first person. But most people feel like they've had time to go over it. I will allow your calculators. I will, you will have, I will allow a cheat sheet, one page. Uh, you can put anything on there you want because I don't, I don't, it's not, Important to me that you memorize formulas, but that you understand how to use them. And that's what we'll do here next Wednesday. Yes? So will it be a like, 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 It is one through five. Yeah, we are finishing four today and starting five. We'll finish five Friday. Monday will be a review of all that. And next Wednesday we'll have the exam. Yes? Are my questions directly from the book? No. Some are. Uh, most of them are not. But many are. Uh, basically, it's the same author through WebAssign, so he has many of the same questions in the end of the chapter that he also makes available as a bank in WebAssign that, that I can choose from, and I have chosen many of those. Some I've changed and adjusted, and others I've made up myself, but the same exact format. Other questions about the exam? I'll go ahead and tell you now. Um, I let you retake the exam. If you take it during class, if you're here, then you are allowed to retake the exam. And that will be online as a web assign assignment. It won't be available until right after class next Wednesday, so you can't see the questions. It'll be the exact same exam as you take during class next Wednesday? Uh, several reasons. One, many of you will feel like you didn't do well or something. This is a way to make up points. It's like a re, uh, you get to retake. It's a retake. Uh, I like it because 
it encourages you to go back and figure out the right answers and learn the material because you know how it is. Many times you take an exam and it's over and gone, that's behind you, you never look back. You know, I, bottom line for me is that you learn the material better, so it's a reason to go back. It would be, it'll be available right after lecture next Wednesday and you'll have till before the next class, Friday, so two days, to finish it. Open book. Open note, open friend. <laughs> uh, I, I don't really care. I just want you to learn the material. However, on the exam retake, you only get one guess. It's not like the homework where you get to, you know, if there's four, four choices, you get three opportunities in homework. On the retake, you're just going to get one. Is that clear? So you don't get confused. I, so it, you can get up to half the points you missed back that way because I'm going to average the two if you decide to retake it. So say you get, let's make our math easy, 50 on the exam during class and you get 100, which is totally reasonable on the retake with two days and open book, then the average will be a 75. You're getting half of those points back by retaking it. Yet... The next question is, no, you will not know what your grade is from the exam day before you have to finish this. Uh, I use the bubble sheets, um, so you'll fill in the bubbles for the multiple choice questions, and uh, the, the testing center will do that. They're, they're quick, but they're not always that quick, so most likely, and don't count on it, you won't know how you did, so it's, it's your feeling. Uh, so there's one caveat. If you decide to re take the retake and you do worse, I'm still averaging. I have had two people ever, I think, in the last six, seven years do worse, and it was only by like one question, <laughs> so it didn't really matter. Uh, uh, the idea, though, is you go home and look up the answers and verify them as you take the retake instead of just going home and exact answering the exact same things you did during the exam day. That doesn't do you any good. So there is that. You do not have to do the retake. If you don't, you just get what you had exam day. If you think you did fine, great. But if you start the retake, I will average whatever the score it, it is. Even if you only do half of the retake, which is silly, <laughs> that'll be your score. I'll remind you, of course, next week. That way you understand it now. Is that questions about it? That'll, we'll do, have that same process with each midterm. The final, we won't have that option. But. So is the sheet going up to put notes on? Is that front and back? Or? You can make it front and back. I don't care. Seriously, I found uh, people memorizing formulas is silly. And so you can put them on there. And I still watch people not. It doesn't help them sometimes. <laughs> if you don't know what they mean. So I'm, I'm perfectly fine, you know, constant values, formulas, practice problems. Yes? No, I provide the scan. I'll provide everything. Well, you, you need yourself. It, many of you will probably want a calculator. I try to design the test so you can do the whole thing without complicated calculations. You don't need a calculator to answer all of them. But I know it makes many people feel better, so bring a calculator if that's you. We'll have four midterms and then the final. The final will be comprehensive, include everything. But these will just include, like right now, chapters one through five. The next test will be the new stuff. All right. Well, I want to start with clickers this time. I have several as a way of reviewing uh, chapters three and four.
All right, now you can see the session ID and channel 41 for the clickers as you're getting in and logging in. I'll go ahead and open the polling for this one. And while you're logging in and reading, did Adora show up yet? Adora? Okay. So again, you can see this is the same format as like the homework's been and the pre-lectures. The exam will be like this, but you know, different questions. I was going to comment about the, the cheat sheet. The point of the exams are to reason through. Uh, we're, we're teaching these principles and Newton's laws and motion and whatnot. Can you apply it in a, in a new situation? Many of them will be familiar, but you ask it a little different, and you think, oh, this is completely different. We've never seen this. You'll have all the information you need to answer this. It's just can you put the pieces together? Practice those reasoning skills. Do you know there's a, when you, when you survey employers, employees, employers, <laughs> that hire physicists, almost always in the top three reasons why they hire a physicist, the one, one of those reasons is not because they understand physics, but almost always one of those reasons is, you want to guess? They're good at solving problems because they can take a situation and reason through it with their skills. That's what I'm trying to teach you in this course as well. So I expect you to reason quite a bit. All right, does that enough time for this first one? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. The number didn't change, so you all got it in. 98, whopping majority for zero. Answer A, very good. Very good. Key here, if it's falling at constant velocity, then velocity is not changing. So the acceleration must be zero. The one or two of you that missed this, it, um, does that help? What's that? That's okay. All right. So basically, if you read any, if you have any situation, but the velocity's not changing, boom, you know right there. As confusing as the rest of it could sound, the acceleration must be zero. How about a free falling object? Polling's open. Due to the slow response of, uh, responses, I'll give you one clue. What's free falling mean? Yeah, it's falling under the influence of gravity alone. The acceleration is due to gravity. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There was one more response last time. Get it in. Going once, twice. All right. Sold to the American. Most of you see, which is the correct answer. How'd you get it? Somebody that got it right. Yes? Acceleration of gravity is roughly 10. So that, that means it's 10 meters per second 
every second. It's the change of velocity. The velocity is changing by 10 meters a second. Every second. So in that next second, it changes by 10. So what would the speed be exactly after that second? 10 more. What was it going? Yeah, 30. So now it's 40. The only answer close to that is C, more than 35. Questions? So acceleration is just a rate of change for that velocity. All right. Pulling's open. What's the force of gravity acting on a two kilogram, two kilogram melon? Your clue here is these, the next batch is on chapter 4, which was Newton's second law. So it obviously has something to do with that, <laughs> if you're stumped. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Bang. Three-fourths of you answering C, which is correct. Force. It, weight is a force. And force is mass times acceleration. It's how your mass is being accelerated. Keys to this one is remembering kilogram is a unit for mass. And well, how fast is it being accelerated? At 10 meters per second squared. So 2 times 10. 20 newtons. That's the weight of the melon. That's the force of the earth pulling on it. Questions, concerns, comments? And I hope you're brave that if it's still confused, you won't be embarrassed because, you know, this is where we work it out. Somebody that left? Was somebody sitting next to you? So are they in our class? Are they coming back? Or was this somebody from the former class? Okay. No problem. <laughs> All right, how about this one? We talked about this uh, and during one lecture. I know it wasn't a big emphasis, but the book discusses it as well. It's OK. You can ask your neighbor if you don't remember what directly and inversely proportional means. I don't mind if you talk during these. You know, I hear like, it's okay. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. Bang. Okay, we're split. We don't know the difference between A and B yet, but it's one of those. I'll help you. It is one of those. So you know what? Talk to your neighbor. Find out what the difference is between directly and indirectly. Make sure you have it right. And you can answer again when you're ready.
If you didn't change your answer, we'll re-enter that back in. If you did, put what you think it is now. Polling's open to re-answer the same question. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's see if anything changed. Oh, people shifted to B more. Well, you're right. Inversely proportional means they're inverses of each other. If one gets larger, the other gets smaller. That's how it works here. If you increase the mass, you've increased the resistance to changing its motion, its inertia. That got bigger. This ratio, and thus the acceleration, is smaller. It's for the same, think of it this way. If you push on something, always the same. If it's got more mass, you accelerate it less. They're inversely proportional. They go opposite directions. Whereas force and acceleration, we could say we're directly proportional. Because if you push harder, it accelerates more. As one gets bigger, the other gets bigger. All right. This is a good review. All right, try this one. After the last one, I'm optimistic here. This is a good example of, this is really kind of asking the exact same thing, but in a different way. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bang. Most of you see. Very good. This one has some comments at the bottom. Basically, it's saying, yeah, if you double the force only, what happens to the acceleration? goes up by how much? Twice, yeah. If you double the mass only, what happens to the acceleration? It decreases by half. So there's two things going on. Double the force, you double the acceleration. But you double the mass, you cut it in half. They can, the, the, the effects cancel each other. So you'll end up with the same acceleration. Questions, concerns? Are, are folks good now? Give me some feedback. All right. You guys find this useful? All right. This is really making sure you understand the difference between position, velocity, acceleration, and how they're related to each other. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Two thirds of you think it's A. The majority rules. Who would like to explain that one that got it right? 
Yeah. Free fall means it's only under the force of gravity. What's staying constant? Acceleration's constant, right. And acceleration is, is what? What's it represent? Change in velocity. So is the change in velocity changing? No, it's constant. We just said that. So it's always changing by the same amount. It is going faster and faster and faster. That's what throws folks off. The velocity is increasing, yes. But it's increasing by the same amount every second. Is that clearer? Acceleration is the change in velocity. Velocity is speed with a direction. So that, that means if the acceleration is constant, the speed, the change in speed is constant. The change in speed is constant. The speed is not. It's going faster and faster, but the change is staying constant. How about the position each second? How does the change in position vary each second? That one is getting more and more. It covers more and more distance position every second because it's going faster every second. So that one, it wouldn't be the same change in position every second for position. Uh, two more. This is good. All right, we've done this one a few times. Did a demo on it. The book discusses it. Let's see where, where you guys are at. Bless you. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Three fourths of you think you got it. The overwhelming majority thought it was C. The correct answer is D. Um, I, I lied. I didn't want to ask the next one. So that, that's the one I'm ending on. So let, we obviously, I, I got some more work to do here. The feather and the rock. They hit at the same time, right? Why? Why, why even this? It says the 10 kilogram and the 5 kilogram rock uh, hit the ground at the same time. That's what it says, right? So what's the same for both of them? The mass is not the same. Those of you that said C think the force is the same. What's the same for sure? We know for sure is the same. The acceleration due to gravity acts on all objects equally. 10 meters per second squared. That's answer D. What's the weight of the 10 kilogram rock? You answered that one correctly earlier with the 2 kilogram melon. What's the weight of the 10 kilogram rock? 100 newtons. 10 kilograms times the acceleration of 10 meters per second squared, 10 times 10 is 100 newtons. What's the weight of the 5 kilogram rock? 50 newtons. Their weights are different. Is the force of gravity the same on them? Absolutely not. It does not pull on them. The force is not the same for both of them. The more massive one, the 10 kilograms, it has more inertia, so it has to pull harder twice as hard to overcome its inertia in order for them to accelerate at the same rate. And acceleration is the ratio of F over M right here. 
Is that clearer? And still any confusions? So yeah, that, that's one I, I'm hoping that, you know, 10 years after this course, you know, people, yeah, people, most people say, yeah, things fall at the same rate. They hit the ground at the same time, ignoring air resistance. But they get the reason wrong. It's not because the force is the same. The acceleration's the same. They're definitely different forces. All right. Now let's throw in air resistance. We, talk, we talked about terminal velocity. You know these won't hit at the same time in real life, right? Woo! Because air resistance can act on the object. When this hits terminal velocity, and it does it quickly, right about there, and then it goes funky. What's happening at terminal velocity? What's zero? The acceleration, because the velocity is no longer changing. And if the net acceleration is zero, we didn't like get rid of gravity. The acceleration due to gravity is still 10. But now there's air resistance trying to accelerate it up, slow it down as it falls. So the net acceleration is zero, thus the net force must be you guys weren't as confident. Zero. It's in dynamic equilibrium. The force is balanced. So what will happen? Let's say I have three coffee filters in this hand and one in this one. Who will hit first? Who will hit the ground first? Three or one? Both at the same time? Three hits. Why? And we're not in free fall. So air resistance is important. And say that again, Courtney. Well, Court, sorry. Um, yeah, the weight of this, the force down is bigger. You know, at terminal velocity, did they both hit terminal velocity? Let's watch again. Let's watch even this one. Yeah, it still seems to hit a terminal velocity and then start doing its little. So it, they both balanced forces. If this represents the force of just the one coffee filter, how should I represent the force of the three coffee filters? Yeah, both of these should be bigger, right? Because it weighs more. So it needs more air resistance to counter it. Do you see though why the time it reaches terminal velocity, they're balanced? Does this make sense, or do I need to draw it on the board? I, I, I realize sometimes I look like a dork up here, but that's okay. I'm okay with it. <laughs> so they eventually balance, but it has to fall further. And it has to be going faster. Whose terminal speed is, is, is greater? They both reach a terminal velocity, but it's not the same terminal velocity. Whose is larger? Yeah, this one. It has to fall faster to counter its weight because it weighs more. So question. If uh, Fat Albert and uh, me jump out of an airplane, open our parachutes, who will hit the ground first? Is the terminal velocity about the same for everybody? Roughly. But no, I'm going to say, change that to it depends. I'll come back to that. Who weighs more? Fat Albert. Fat Albert. So is that any different than this? No. We're both going to reach terminal velocity thanks to the parachute. <laughs> Whose terminal velocity will be greater? His. Here. The, the heavier one, he'll have to fall further and faster. He'll keep increasing speed until the air resistance increases enough to balance his weight. 
then he won't go any faster. But he's now going faster than I am because I reach terminal velocity sooner. Well, if he's falling faster, he's going to reach the ground first. Still safe, but he'll hit the ground first. Okay, was there another comment? Does that make sense? So, you know, how many had those toys, you know, where you got the parachutist? We need further up, don't we? I don't know. This ceiling might not be tall enough. There we go. Yay. This is qualitative, but let's uh let's make him heavier. You think he'll reach terminal velocity? Well, that's why you have to know how to pack your chute right. <laughs> there. Yes, it's still open, and it's uh, down here it was going smoothly at constant velocity, but yeah, it was down here. It took longer. It did reach it, but yes, overall, the heavier parachutist hit the ground first. But it's just always fun to throw these things. I used to love this as a kid, so and you can do it in a physics class in a university setting. Why not? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But in the park, you can throw it a lot higher, and it has more room to open. That one just took longer to open. All right, you get the point anyway. One more? Fine with me. Ah, safe. All right. Newton's third law, chapter 5. I bet most of you already know it. One, because you read in the book or the pre-lectures, but even before this class, what's Newton's third law? Yeah, equal but opposite. People heard that. There's an equal but opposite force. Or for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. You heard that? That's Newton's third law. I like to think of it as all forces come in pairs. A force is an interaction. You can't have a force unless you're interacting with something else. And if you're interacting with it, then there's forces on both of you. So if I come and push on this wall, why am I not falling through the wall? Because it's pushing back with an equal but opposite force. Because force is a vector. So my force is directed into the wall, and the wall's force is back on me directed this way. I can't emphasize enough too. These are called action-reaction pairs. All forces come in pairs, but they're on opposite bodies, opposite objects. My force is on the wall. It's trying to change the motion of the wall, trying to accelerate the wall. The wall's force is on me. It's trying to change my motion. See how they're on two different objects? So as, these, as we discuss action-reaction pairs, they can't be a pair if they're on the same object. You know something's wrong. Now here's an example, my favorite one. You step on the bathroom scale. My weight uh, this morning, I don't know, was about 165 pounds. That's the force of the earth pulling down on me. Why do I not fall down? Why am I not accelerating down? Yeah, the scale is providing a support normal force back up on me that equals my weight because I'm in equilibrium. So what's the action-reaction pairs? Me and the scale? No. Who's pulling on me? The earth. So what do I do to the earth? I'm pulling up on the earth. If the earth's pulling me down, I'm pulling up on it. That's Newton's third law. And how strongly am I pulling the earth? 165 pounds. So seriously, if I jump off and I'm in the air, it's pulling me down. There's nothing supporting me. 
while I'm in free fall, I'm pulling the earth up right now. You really are. Do you see the earth move, though? No. Why? Because, let's look at this again. Let's, the force is the same. So if you have my mass and the mass of the earth, who gets accelerated more? Well, yeah, I do. We see the effect on me. It pulled me down to the ground. This one? <laughs> it really does have an effect, but it's negligible. It's unnoticeable because the earth is so massive. It has a lot of inertia. But the force between us is exactly the same, just in opposite directions. So equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So there is another pair going on. And that would be the force of me on the scale, because I am pushing on it, and the scale back on me. That's a pair. Me on the scale, scale back on me. But that's separate than the earth on me, me on the earth. Go back to this one. The earth pulls on me, me. The scale pushes on me. They're on the same object, so that couldn't have been the action-reaction pair. There's a uh, tip-off. Let's do this one. I have a spring-loaded cart here. Let's pull the spring back. Not that far. Put a little slug in here. So when I burn this string, the spring can push the slug that way. So the cart exerts a force on the slug that way. Newton's third law says, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the slug must be pushing back on the cart at the same time with the exact same force. All forces come in pairs. So yeah, it's recoil, kickback. How many of you have sh uh, shoot guns? And you, or bow and arrow even, you feel it. As it launches it forward, that means it's pushing back on you at the same time. All right. Get to where it's barely moving. Ready? And sure enough. Now, are you impressed? No, this isn't zesty. But why is it moving so slowly? It was the same force on the slug shot out. But the cart chewed, so it does, it's not affected much. That's uh, Newton's third law. Um, I'll save that one for Friday. Questions? We'll end there then. Have a great day.